I have covered many different Linux distributions on my channel. But one thing I can say, there are very few that I've loaded up and really been impressed right off the bat with the way they look, their function, and ease of use. That's until I tried this distribution. Now, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's Modicia, Modicia, not really sure. But it's an Italian distribution based on Ubuntu. And let me tell you guys something. It is the most aesthetically pleasing, easy to use, and functioning operating system that I have probably ever used. And that's what we're going to cover today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by OnlyOffice. If you want to go to their website, it's OnlyOffice.com. Are you presently running something like a Google Docs or using Microsoft Online? Do you know that all of your emails, photos, and everything they have access to, they can read, they can use for whatever they want? Don't believe me? Go look it up. You don't have that problem with OnlyOffice. It's a secure office and productivity suite. Now, if you scroll down on their website, you've got OnlyOffice Docs, which is collaborative online document editors. You've got spreadsheets, documents, presentations, and forms. It's got the highest compatibility with Microsoft Office, easy integration with ready-to-use connectors, and WOPI support and well-documented API. And then you also have OnlyOffice Workspace. Do you have a business? You can run your entire business through OnlyOffice. It's got document, email, CRM, projects, calendar. It's got enhanced security features, including private rooms, LDAP and Active Directory authentication, compliance, and international security standards. And speaking of security, let's go over here and let's take a look at the security real quick. It lets you know we provide a comprehensive range of security tools and services keeping your data safe on all fronts. Host solutions on premises, encrypt documents and data, customize access settings, and connect authentication services, and manage access rights to protect yourself from unauthorized access, data leaks, and insider actions. Now let's go back real quick. In one of my favorite things I like about it, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and for Linux. If you use Linux, you can get OnlyOffice. It is a great tool. You can also get it on the Google Play Store for your Android phone or at the Apple iTunes Store for your iPhone. So zip on over and check it out. OnlyOffice.com. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Now, let's get to the video. Now, we are at Modicia OS's website, which is ModiciaOS.cloud. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And when you come to their site, it's very beautiful. It's got a lot of flags right here. You've got home, about, manual, professional users, download, reviews, and press. And if you scroll down, it lets you know right here, they have an ultimate version, an enterprise version, and an education version. The ultimate's gonna have a lot of audio and graphics and video tools, which is what we'll be looking at today. And then your enterprise version has a lot of office publishing and writer tools, and then education has the education, learning, and school tools. And then if you scroll down a little bit, it gives you some information and screenshots of the system and schools that are using the system. And then you come down here, you've got a manual down here, English speakers, Spanish, Italian. You can get any manual that you want. Professional use, they have some little videos right here you could look for. And then of course, community editions, support editions. And then if you want to get pro assistance with it, you can get it for like $23 a year. That's if you download it and you want professional email support 24-7, development team contact, N6 email support, troubleshooting. That's pretty impressive. How many clients, how many graphic studios, how many students, and how long they've been around. And then, of course, you've got reviews down here and press clippings. And then if you go up top and click on professional users, it lets you know right here. You can use it every day for office, graphic studios, or schools, and then, of course, their reviews in their home. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to zip on over to the Modicia OS desktop. We are now at Modicia's desktop. If you download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. Right off the bat, it's got a subdued wallpaper, but I'm going to show you real quick. You've got some beautiful ones to choose from. You've got a single panel up here. Down here you have a dock, a very responsive dock, I might say, especially in a virtual machine. Most Ubuntu derivatives, when I get them into a virtual machine, are real slow and laggy. This one isn't at all. It's very responsive. Now I want to go ahead and right click, and as you can see, you kind of got your window manager here. It's XFCE. It's a modified version. But I'm going to go ahead and change the background. And you have several beautiful backgrounds to choose from. 
The one I like the most is probably this one right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Like I said, this distribution is made in Italy, and it's used in quite a few schools, and I believe over 17 to 1800 students are using it on a daily basis. Now, if you come down to the bottom and you come to the dock, right here you have Expose. You just click on it, and it opens up this window. You've got your workspaces over here to the right, and then if you come up here and click on this, it's got all of your applications right here. You can pull up accessories, and it'll let you see all the accessories you have on here. Or you can go back. You've got graphics. It's just a quick way that if you want to get to applications, you can. You also have the choice as well to back out of this and go up here and just click. And then you've got kind of a grid. It's elementary-like looking, but I like the look of this one a lot better. You can come down here. You've got your accessories. You've got your app expose. So if you click on that, It'll bring all of your applications into one window. So that way you can find them quickly. Or if you're looking for a specific one, let's say you were looking for something like Audacity, you could pull that up. And there's Audacious, Audacity, QJack, QTractor. And that's just a quick way to find them on the expose. Come back down to the dock, you've got your screenshot tool. You can do entire screen, select a region. If you wanted to click on that, you could just come up here, select it. And then right here, you could save it wherever you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you do have your file manager. Let's go ahead and put this up here. Let's make it a little bit. Let's go ahead and make it full screen. It's lightweight. I like the theming of it. Matter of fact, I may try to switch to a dark theme. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Let's go up here and go to settings. Let's look for settings. And there's your settings manager. And let's go ahead and go with appearance. And you've got gray bird dark, breeze dark. I want to try gray bird. Okay, yes, I really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back to the file manager. Oh, yes, I love the way that looks. That right there is great. But you've got your usual suspects over here. you got your home folder right here. This is the Thunar File Manager. And as you can tell, it's got global menus up here. Thunar File Manager, you've got File, Edit, View, Go, and Help right here. And you can look at About. And this is 4.16.10 version of Thunar, which is the most recent. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of our File Manager. Come back down to the bottom. Then you've got your App Expose, which we just looked at a while ago your USB stick formatter. You got that tool right out of the bat. If you've got a USB stick you need to format, you've got that tool right there on your dock. Then you've got your system monitor. Let's go ahead and open that up and let's move this over and let's maximize. You've got your processes right here. You also have resources. It'll show you how much of your CPU you're using. Right now I've got two CPUs issued to this machine. We're hovering anywhere from 8 to 15 percent. And then memory We've got 4.1 gigabytes issued to it. We're using 1.6 at rest with the system monitor open, but we are in a virtual machine, so that's going to be showing a little bit more than we're actually using. But at the same time, you've got a beautiful operating system here, and it's going to have a little bit more resources. Plus, I got 4 gigs issued to it, so it's using a little bit more than if I only had 2 issued to it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the system monitor. Come back down here, and it's got one of my most favorite tools out of the box, which is Stacer. I think this is a lot better than something like a Windows 11 Task Manager. This right here brings everything up. You've got your CPU right here. And as you can see, now that we pulled it up in Stacer, we're using about 760 to 780 megabytes of the 4 gigs that we have issued. So you're getting a lot better picture of what RAM is actually being used, and then how much of your disk space is being used. I'm going to go over here, and now you've got your startup apps. This just basically shows you what apps that are going to automatically start when you start your system. Right now, you've got Bar, Dock, Gnome Pi, and a Modicia Monitor. And then you can come down here. You've got System Cleaner. You can clean everything from package caches all the way to trash. And then you have a search built in right here. And then you've got services that are showing what comes on when you power on or what you have started since you've powered on. So that breaks it down that you know what's coming on when you start your system and then what you actually power on when you're in your system. Right now, system services that are running, 75. And then the list of all your processes that you have open. Right now, we're only running 71 processes out of the box. This is closer to what you're going to see with like an Arch install. If you use Arch Linux, 
you usually only have anywhere between 60 to 70 processes running. Now, if you use an Ubuntu release or sometimes a Debian release, you could open this up and it's going to show that you've got anywhere from 150 to 200 processes running in the background. So this right here is definitely lightweight when you factor that in. So we come down here, you've got your packages that are installed. You've got 3,026 packages. This is called an ultimate edition of their operating system. And I'm going to cover that in just a second because basically they want to make it for the working man, for the person that's doing audio or doing video or maybe doing business. This right here gets those applications out of the way so you don't have to go find them and hunt them down. And then come down here, you got your history of your CPU, history of your RAM, You've got your helpers right here. This is pretty much your host management, and it lets you know right here the IP addresses and your loopbacks and things like that. And then your repositories. Right here you have your apt repositories that you can turn on or shut off. You've got the regular Ubuntu repositories out of the box. You can add the restricted, the update restricted, the universe, the update universe, the multiverse, the update multiverse, or the backports. You can turn any of those on anytime that you want. And then you could add those repositories. So if you're somebody that likes getting extra repositories with your system, they got an easy place for you to change that and set that up. Then your window manager, text quality, the appearance, you can change that, show desktop icons, trash icons, whatever you want to do right here. Then we come down to settings. It's set for English, disks, start page. You can change your start page if you want to do to startup app, system cleaner, whatever you might want to do. And then down here, you've got feedback. If you wanted to send them feedback, you could put your name, email address, and tell them they're doing a great job or something you'd like to see in maybe a future release and then send it. And then that way you can help them out with the operating system. And then of course, down here, you've got donate. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Stacer. You come down here, you've got land share. This right here is a great tool. If you're wanting to share things between computers or you're wanting to share things to mobile devices, you can do that real easy. And then it does have cheese and then your web browser. Now it does come with Google Chrome out of the box, which some people aren't gonna be happy about, but it's real easy to uninstall Chrome and put something on there that you want. When it boots up, you've got search by Bonisha. And right here, you can donate to them by PayPal. And then if we do a search, Let's say we do a search for eBuzz Central. It does have Google as your search engine. But like I said, it's real easy to change. You can uninstall Google, put whatever browser that you want on the system, and you're good to go. Now, up here, it does have a switch between English and Italian. So you can change that if you wanted to. But that is Google Chrome. And as you can see, the global menu pops up up here. The file, edit, view, history. So that's got that nice integrated with a lot of different applications. And we'll go ahead and close out of that. Come back down here. You've got your mail reader, which is Evolution Mail. And any of you that have used Evolution know that it's a great application. But like I said, if it's not something you want, you could also get rid of it and use Thunderbird. I've actually kind of went over to Evolution or MailSpring on most of my Linux machines just because they're easy to set up and they have a better aesthetic to them. That's my personal opinion. A lot of you out there get on me sometimes about my video saying you worry more about what the operating system looks like than what it can do. At the end of the day, it's all Linux underneath and we can add and subtract to anything we want to do with it and make it fit our personality and our workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and we're gonna come back down here. You've got the XNView multi-platform, VLC media player, your Audacious, LibreOffice, if you click on LibreOffice right here, I love the icons that they're using. I think it really makes the operating system pop. And there's your LibreOffice. Let's go ahead and go over here to about LibreOffice. And this is version 7.3.2.2. So that's an up-to-date version of LibreOffice. But you have everything you need right out of the box. Your writer, calc, impress, draw, math, and base database. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of LibreOffice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the other applications we do have with this system. So I'm going to go ahead and pop on up here. We've got your app grid and you've got your language support. You've got app expose, the mate calculator. Really what they've done is they've taken a lot of tools from different distributions, brought them all into one operating system to make it easy and functional for whoever might be using it. You've got your USB image writer. So if you're running a different system and you want to try out a Linux distribution, all you got to do is download it, write it to a USB right here. 
So let's go ahead and come down to audio. On audio, you have additive synthesizer, audacity, audio sampler, drum kit, mix, LMMS, synthesizer, XJDO. We can come down here. You've got animated GIFs. You've got GIMP out of the box. I love the icon they're using for GIMP. You've got My Paint, LibreOffice Draw, Inkscape, Image Mosaic Wall, Photo Collage, Ristretto Image Viewer. Then we can come over here to Internet. There's Google Chrome right there. Blue Griffin. That's a web and EPUB editor if you're not familiar with it. KDE Connect. You've got Microsoft OneDrive you can access from right here. You've got Skype, Telegram, Translate, Cubic Torrent, WhatsApp. All of this is installed out of the box. But like I said, if it's something you don't want, you can get rid of it easily. Then we'll go over to Multimedia. You've got Sound Recorder, VLC, Simple Screen Recorder, DVD Styler. Over to Office. We've covered all the LibreOffice. You've got Master PDF Editor. You do have the online versions of Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel installed out of the box. Now, if you don't want these, you can uninstall them. But if you're somebody that uses those online tools and you want to keep those, they're already integrated here and it makes it easy for you. Then you go to Settings. You've got Bleach Bit, Disk Analyzer, Expose. You've got HTOP that shows system processes. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's maximize it and see even right here with HTOP, it's showing at 1.22 gigabytes of the 3.83. But then when you go to Stacer, you're only using 700 to 800 for the actual operating system to be running, not what resources are being used in the background to run the operating system. And then your swap, you've got 1.9 gigabytes out of the box on the live version. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. We'll go ahead and go back up here. Back down over here to settings, back down over here to settings, real time kernel for multimedia, Resilio, time shift, time shift. If you're not familiar with time shift, this is definitely a place that you want to come if you want to get your system saved and backed up. Now, if you're not using the BTRFS file system, be sure to leave it on rsync and go ahead and click next. And then right here, you would see the disk. I'm in a virtual machine, so it's not going to show it, but on yours, it would actually show the disk that you're using, but you would go up, select it, next, and finish, and it would take a snapshot of your system. So that way, should you have any problems in the future, you could come over here, refresh it from a snapshot, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and then go back up top, back down to settings, through our file manager we already looked at. Then we can go over here. We've got video. You've got Anime Shooter, Avid Mux, Blender, Curlew, Natron, Caden Live, Handbrake, and Subtitles right out of the box. And then we come over here to your video DCP. You've got a lot of tools right there as well. Now you come up here. You've got a single panel. You can right click on that panel. You can make some adjustments if you wanted to. Just go to Panel Preferences. You could change the way it looked, make it bigger, make it smaller, change your row sizes. But those of you familiar with XFCE know that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then you come back up top. You've got power, restart, time, sound, battery level, notifications. And then you have this little tool right here, little conky, that shows you the CPU, RAM usage, and your file system. And that, guys, is just a quick look at Modisha OS 22 Ultimate. It is a great operating system. It's responsive right out of the box. It comes with plenty of tools. It's aesthetically pleasing. And really, I don't think it's bloated. If you're somebody that uses Windows, or you're somebody that uses Mac, or you're somebody that takes Ubuntu or Debian, or Arch for that matter, and you have to download a lot of tools that you use on a daily basis, they're already here. It is a really nice operating system. I'm telling you guys, go download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and I promise you, you will be impressed. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're doing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, going over to PayPal and dropping us a donation, or zip over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.